I'll make sure you know what panel you're at. Um, my name is Francis and I run events for Capcom. It's an extreme pleasure because this is the first ever PAX East panel that we've ever done. And I just want to say, Boston, you guys have really represented. And thank you all for being here. We have a lot of cool stuff to show you. All the new games we've got coming out and maybe a couple surprises. So without further ado, away we go. Following uh, Capcom Unity or Ask Capcom the streams and stuff that we do, we've last December kind of kicked off our 25th anniversary efforts for the U.S. Japan kind of ran most of 2012, and we were going to focus on December and then 2013. Um, that kind of was kicked off with Street Fighter Cross Mega Man, which we know now has passed uh, 1 million downloads worldwide. Which kind of puts on we made it, um, and hopefully that leads to a promising career for him. But uh, that was a really cool bit of news that we posted uh, like a week or so ago. So now that we're in 2013, this is going to be kind of a quick overview of what we've got cooking right now and hopefully set the stage for further announcements throughout the year um, because we will be sending this all the way to the end of the year. So first, it's just a quick reminder in case anyone didn't know, this USB stick, which is super badass, uh, 8 gig stick, 100 bucks worth of stuff, including uh, the digital version of the out of print Mega Man X. Um, works, the Mega Man Tribute album, as well as uh, the first four issues of the Archie comic, Mega Man 1 4, as well as uh, the Street Fighter Cross Mega Man soundtrack by A-Rival, which is incredible, and uh, really cool mashups of Street Fighter and Mega Man music mixed together, so if you haven't heard that, it's, it's free on his site as well as uh, on the stick. Um, that's exclusive to the Capcom store, it's actually one of the fastest selling things we've had on there in years, so um, they want to act on it quickly, because they'll have to reorder them in the delays months, so hot on it. Uh, next is a reminder also that uh, next month starts up this um, crossover with Archie Comics, this kind of bizarre, can't believe it's actually happening, of Sonic and Mega Man, and even if you're not reading the comics, uh, I'd encourage this only because so many of the covers are going to be like really cool retro shoutouts, like the NBC one in the middle there, um, and there's like 16-bit variants and a lot of the cover images are out there, but that's just another kind of heads up that uh, starts next month, and uh, if you go to Comic Shop on Free Comic Book Day, which is the day after Iron Man 3, uh, May 4th, Saturday, you will uh, get a primer that kind of outlines here's what's happening and what issues you want to go grab these uh, through Sonic, Sonic Universe, and the Mega Man Archie comic. Uh, which actually I think is just about to have its 25th milestone issue, which will be part of this Worlds Collide storyline. Um, quick news also Mega Man 1 through 3 are already on virtual console in the US, but we can also confirm that Mega Man 4 is coming April 25th, followed by Mega Man 5 May 16th, probably. And then Mega Man 6 definitely in June, and then as far as beyond Mega Man 6, we're already talking about looking at some of the games that, what other, what, what other games we could put on there. Um, we haven't come to any decisions yet. Done. 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 Hopefully after June we'll have figured out what can we do next, because we do want to keep it moving throughout the year and have new, new stuff showing up. Um, next thing is also a very quick update. Uh, the digital soundtrack, so it's really hard to get some of the game music legit, and as a big game music fan, I wanted to we'll work with our licensing and, and our Capcom store to make that legit available. Um, so we're working on that, and that should be 1 through 10 available in the summer, um, available on your usual formats, but that's not really been something that's been totally legally, legitimately available. So, giving people the option is always nice. Uh, you can listen to YD2 anywhere, it'd be great. Uh, next up, actually, is, uh, so, to commemorate all of this, there is something new, a new, like, kind of ultimate Mega Man collectible thing that we wanted to show off. Um, which I will... It's an exclusive, no one's seen it. Yeah. You're the first to see it anywhere, because it just came in uh, last week to the office. Yes. And I carried it on my luggage. One, two, yeah, yeah, yeah. three, here we go. Kaboom! Yeah. Yeah. So, this guy... That doesn't mean anything! <laughs> you know what? It's indestructible. Okay. Headphones light up, and 
that lights up uh, this, this space all around. So this is uh, going to be on uh, San Diego Comic Con, the first time it's available. Uh, this is like the only one in existence right now. So yeah, this is a prototype. Yes. Um, so this is kind of a thing Francis and I worked on for the last few months. I'm just going to let this do chill out. Um, but yeah, that'll be at San Diego Comic Con, and uh, just pretty happy to finally see this thing exist. Uh, it took a few months of doing, but we worked together on that, and hopefully the images do a bit better justice. Uh, they, in the dark, you, like just the light off of it is really slick, and the buster and everything, so it's pretty damn cool. Uh, but we also have another option. Uh, if classic Mega Man you kind of okay with, but you kind of want something else, uh, this is a prototype image as well. This is not, this is a work in progress, but there's going to be a classic and X in kind of this, you know, action pose. Um, and it'll be this similar size, but uh, going off with like a silver finish to kind of commemorate an anniversary because X's 20th anniversary is about to come up. So this is kind of a middle ground. Middle ground? <laughs> middle ground between the two. Um, but yeah, that is, uh, there are probably some other touches done to that, but um, that's kind of the first look um, new to the panel and yeah, it's still being worked on right now. Yeah, get another first look at this will be on sale later at the end of this year. Yes, yes. And then uh, one last thing. Uh, if you're going around the, pa uh, going around, uh, the Sorry. panels and booths today, uh, we have this Mega Man 20th anniversary pin. And I do have 100 on me that I brought, so if while you walk out you want one, just come on up and I'll happily do this and throw them out. <laughs> um, but yeah, if at any point you come around the booth uh, for the next three days, we should have some. Um, and that's, that's kind of Mega Man, like what we've got going right now. Um, but I did want to at least acknowledge, uh, we talked about this before, but um, the notion of a new game. Uh, we're still working on everything behind the scenes, and everyone that's been waiting a long time, we know, and we've heard it, and we've, we've listened and taken that to heart, I especially, as well as, uh, I mean, if you follow as Capcom, you'll see no shortage of like high-ranking Capcom people that want to do something cool. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're we announce something, it's ready, and that it happens. Um, but we figured better to say something instead of nothing. So know that those discussions are still going on, it's still being discussed, it's, there will be news, and as soon as we can share that, uh, I will be screaming and running down the streets. Um, probably naked, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that will happen, but I'm gonna go ahead. It's a rated M to make it. Yes. <laughs> Uh, next up, really quick, uh, it's also the third Capcom's 30th anniversary this year. So 1983 to 2013. Um, so this is going on at the Capcom Unity booth. Uh, we're streaming all weekend. Uh, one of the things we have is a Ghost and Goblin speedrun contest tomorrow from 10 to 1. Some people have already signed up, but if you walk up, you should be able to let some people in. Um, but basically, you're playing for the fastest time, or if you can actually make it to the final boss. Uh, it's like kind of an automatic win. Uh, it's two of a kind. There are only two of these Ghosts and Goblin sticks from Mad Cats. Uh, it's a custom, you know, fight stick. Uh, really nice, um, but you will walk out of here with it. Uh, you'll carry it with you, and we have them on the site, so um, that's just another really cool, quick, small thing for Capcom 30. And we're also still trying to look at some other options to do around June for that, so hopefully another update coming soon. Another thing we want to show you is, you know, Capcom, like Fred said, just 30th anniversary. We have a lot of things planned. We're going to say more in the months to come, but San Diego Comic Con will be a big focal point where a lot of things happen. We have a lot of uh, licensing partners, especially like Udon Publications, who are actually on the show floor here. They got a ton of these gorgeous art books coming out, but there'll be apparel, collectible items, all kinds of things they should be looking out for. So that's Capcom 30. And moving on, any Monster Hunter fans in the house? <laughs> So we got a brand new Monster Hunter to tell you about. It's bigger, it's better, and we have a trailer to start.
200 quests you know, to, uh, take on. It utilizes both the Wii U and the 3D, uh, 3DS interfaces, touch screen interfaces. Um, the key thing about this is multiplayer fun, right? And you never, you never have to play alone. The social gaming at its best. You can connect up to, to three friends using local play for, via the Nintendo 3DS or online play with the Wii U. And Wii U players can also link up with the Nintendo 3DS players to have the same experience at the same time. Um, you can see this live in action. We have a special booth down at, uh, on the show floor dedicated just to Monster Hunter. You can see it for yourself. What's cool is um, you can also use the local 3DS search feature to find other hunters in your location, such as on the floor of PAX East. Um, you're never alone because you always have your cha-cha kind of with you. And you can also exchange information. You can share your guild card with fellow hunters using the Nintendo Street Pass. But like I said, you know, don't listen to me talk about it. Go down and experience it for yourself. We have a dedicated booth number 1092. You can't miss it. It's a giant Monster Hunter graphic. And there you can play it on the Wii U, the 3DS, both together, as well as we're inviting people to bring your own uh, copy of Monster Hunter, sit down and uh, chill out and enjoy a game with a quest for some, some fellow fans. Plus, if you go down there, you've got these cool Kayaka Cha Cha masks, as well as we have some awesome posters of our gorgeous key art. So be sure to check that out. I also say if you do go and want to check out Monster Hunter, ask for Yuri. Uh, he's our Monster Hunter expert on Capcom Community, and he will give you the complete tutorial you need to wrap your mind around Monster Hunter. You know he's going to hate that, right? No, go for it. <laughs> Sorry. That's for you Specific. <laughs> Next up, we have a brand... Yes. What is your name? Who are you? I'm the voice you have to listen to if you want to live. <gasps> My name is Edge. You have to trust me, sis. The year is 2084. And this is Neo Paris. The enemy is memorized. Alan, it seems like a lifetime. I'm sorry, I have no memory of him. You were a memory hunter, Neil. The best. Other hunters merely pillage memories, but you can remix them. Remember us. Edge was right to put it all on you.
This is very textural. Yeah, yeah. So this is a, a trailer. Let's take a look. Read it out. Better enhanced lighting and immersive sound, and they've gone in and actually there's areas where you can do side by side and look like oh the water effects here are actually a little different. And if, if you did play the first one, you can go in there with the eye of detail and kind of examine things that way. Uh, improved raid mode, there's been stuff added um, as far as new weapons and skills and stuff, um, as well as Hunk and Rachel, who were two characters we very much requested to be in raid mode, um, have been added. And uh, there's some gameplay I think on the show floor where you can play as either one of them. Um, Rachel being one of the characters new to Revelations, and then Hunk, I think everybody knows. Mostly from RE2. Um, this will have uh, Resident Evil.net support, and um, it's actually a bit more integrated than RE6 was. So if you were using RENet for an RE6, you can look forward to some like some cooler rewards and cooler incentives uh, with Revelations. So we haven't really gone too much into exactly what they are, but there will be like actual content you can work with. Uh, it should be pretty cool. Um, just a quick recap: uh, if you didn't play, if you didn't miss it on 3DS, one of the cool things about this is uh, this Genesis scanner which is a gun you can pull up and scan the environment, scan enemies, and it very much puts you into a like hunter-gatherer kind of mode to scavenge for ammo, scavenge for herbs, because um, this is a little, little closer to a you know, survival horror experience where you've got to kind of watch what you do, and it's best not to engage every enemy you see. Um, and further to that is uh, Infernal Mode, which is if you are really good, uh, you can try this uh, in nine possible mode um, that just it's not just, oh, it's harder. It deals, enemies deal more damage. It's like remix placement. Enemies that shouldn't be in levels are now there. Some late level enemies show up very quickly. Um, it's actual thoughtful, hard mode to uh, make it a, a different experience for people who are already considering themselves pretty good. Um, there's a new enemy, the wall blister, um, who just like hugs the wall and then pops open. Uh, it's trying to make a popple joke, but I don't know if that's appropriate. Um, as well as, uh, there's another enemy that we showed that we just released screens of who's new to rape mode as well. Um, there's also pre-orders of uh, the Signature Weapon Pack, uh, participating retailers, and uh, keep an eye on Steam soon for a similar pre-order incentive for a PC version. Um, yeah, it's out May 21st. Um, you can try the game downstairs. There's a slice of the campaign you can play, which is, uh, there's a Jill piece and I think a piece with Chris as well. Or you can uh, play the raid mode as well, which is kind of a grindier take on the mercenaries where you get to get loot at the end and upgrade weapons and stuff. It's actually rather addicting. Um, yeah, May 21st, 360, PC, Wii U, PS3. Yeah, come down to play the demo, we got some cool posters of that too. Next up, we have a new franchise that we launched last year, Dragon's Dog yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have a trailer here of Dragon's Dog with Dark Prison. Yourself about a pawn, your grand victory. 
strategies that players will have to overcome if they want to survive in Bitter Black Isle. Uh, some of these enemies will actually spawn at random and sort of descend upon you when you least expect it, adding kind of an element of danger and discomfort to being in Bitter Black Isle. Um, on top of that, we do have an all-new higher tier of skills as well as 14 additional augments, so essentially passive skills, which will allow additional kind of character customization and more build options for players. Um, on top of that, the game would not be complete without additional gear, so we do have over 100 pieces of new equipment, as well as additional uh, crafting and enhancement options. Um, on top of that, if you play DD1, you will definitely appreciate a lot of the kind of core game uh, enhancements we've made. So, this ranges from kind of basic UI tweaks, as well as performance enhancements, and most importantly, changes to our fast travel system. So, it's definitely an improved experience. Um, and speaking of DD1 owners, we do have exclusive items in the game just for them, so you'll be able to import your save game from DD1, and you'll receive 100,000 Rift Crystals, which will be much more important this time around than they were in the original Dragon's Dogma, as well as six exclusive costumes, and most importantly, an Eternal Fairy Stone, which will allow you to have unlimited fast travel. Uh, Dragon's Dogma Dark Horizon will be out on April 23rd on Xbox 360 and PS3. We do have it playable at the booth, and we are giving out these rather fetching bags. There we go. Um, so do come by and check it out, and um, definitely check out our Facebook page as well. We've got sort of all of our news coming out of there, so like the page, check it out, and I hope to see all you guys at the booth. Thanks. All right. Any Lost Planet fans in the house? Should we start the trip? Another trip.
3, it features a return to the extreme condi uh, conditions from Lost Planet 1, uh, where Lost Planet 2 focused on a four-player co-op experience. Lost Planet 3 is more focused on a highly cinematic single-player experience. It follows the storyline of Jim. Uh, Jim's just a normal, everyday guy. He goes over to the planet EDN-3, uh, trying to harvest some thermal energy to solve the energy crisis in, way back at Earth. Um, so the game itself has a lot of diversity when it comes to gameplay. You can both take on enemies on foot or use the utility rig. Um, the game also has a very nice multiplayer mode on top of it with a lot of different features on it. So you're going to want to check it out. It comes out June 25th on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and, and PC. Uh, Pre-order at GameStop, Amazon, or Best Buy for these exclusive offers. And you're definitely going to want to check it out. And now let's uh, talk a little bit about Street Fighter. Yeah! Yeah! Throughout the month of February, we did this nice character poll. Essentially, what we wanted to do was ask the fans what the most popular characters in the Street Fighter franchise were. Uh, we had some great results from this. Over 76,000 people responded, so if you responded, thank you guys very much. Uh, I'm here to reveal the results of the poll today. Uh, so, big surprise, first place was Ryu, uh, followed by Ken, Akuma, Chun-Li, Kami, Sakura, Sagat, and Juri. Uh, and who here likes free stuff? So, as a way to thank you guys for participating in the poll, we put together a very nice t-shirt. You can see it, uh, it rips off the original map design from Street Fighter 2. We've got our top eight uh, characters that won. Uh, we have a thousand of these to give away. So, what size you get depends on where you exit the building. So, in the far back, if you want a medium, exit over there. In the middle is going to be a large, and over here uh, at the front is going to be extra large. You have to sit through the rest of this panel. Yeah, it is <laughs> after the panel. Not yet. Uh, now I actually have another surprise to announce for Street Fighter. I'm happy to announce that development is about to start to begin for an update to the Street Fighter 4 series. Um, we really liked the uh, interaction we got from the fans on the poll, so we want to open this up for suggestions on balance feedback. Uh, so if you have any suggestions on what changes you'd like to see made to the game, uh, please visit Capcom Unity. We're going to have a post up there shortly that explains how you can go and contribute. Uh, and definitely check it out. And thank you guys very much. All right. How about a world premiere announcement just at PAX East? How about that?
um, from the Dungeons and Dragons universe. So two games completely remastered in full in HD in one complete package. So we're bringing back Tower of Doom and Shadow Over Mistara. For Xbox Live Arcade, PSN, Wii U eShop, and PC Steam. So this will be available this June. So we want to show you guys for the first time as well this really kick-ass piece of key art that we had commissioned for this title. Um, we're going to have the game set up at our booth right after the panel, so definitely come down, check it out, and you're going to be able to get a free poster as well. So just in case some of you guys aren't familiar with the original Dungeons & Dragons arcade games that we made, uh, basically they're four player experiences you're going to be able to play as six unique characters in battle, hordes of classic fantasy D&D monsters. So we have all the classic character archetypes. We have the fighter, the dwarf, the cleric, the elf, and Shadow Over Mistara adds two new characters, the magic user and the thief. So all the characters play very uniquely, very differently. So it's going to be up to you guys to find out which character suits your playstyle best and for you to team up with your friends to create the best multiplayer party possible and then go and hack and slash some monsters. So this is probably the feature that all of you guys are really looking forward to the most. We have implemented drop-in and drop-out online co-op uh, for all of the platforms. So basically, people and you guys and your friends are going to be able to join any game at any time seamlessly by dropping in or dropping out. And then this is all powered by uh, a piece of middleware we've used very often in the past, GGPO. Uh, we've used this for Third Strike Online, Marvel vs. Capital Origins, Dark Soccer's Resurrection. Uh, it really provides for the best online experience that you can possibly imagine. Even if you don't have a very fast internet connection, it will give you a very smooth experience. So, yeah, I mean, you don't need to, you know, sit around and be like, hey, okay, let's play at 8 o'clock today. Oh, okay, well, I'm sorry, I'm late, guys. Like, nothing like that. You start playing on your time, and then your friends can come and join you whenever they get there. So, um, it's just, we're going to really provide the best multiplayer experience possible for all you guys out there. And, of course, local co-op is also implemented, so you're going to be able to invite your friends over to your house and then play that way as well. So we have faithfully re replicated the full arcade experience. So you're going to get you know, the various levels, all the different monsters, the forked pass, multiple endings, all the different characters. So if you guys have played the arcade games in the past, I know I have. I spent a lot of time in the arcades you know, pumping in quarters in the machine uh, with my buddies back then. You guys are going to go through that original arcade experience just as you remembered it back in the day. But this time around, we're adding in a lot of new features as well. Uh, one thing that we're really excited about is the customizable house rules. What this does is it allows you to alter the gameplay mechanics in a completely new way and provides a brand new experience. So I can give you a few examples. Uh, there's one uh, option that basically turns the arcade mode into a time, time attack mode, where you start off with a certain amount of time, you defeat enemies to build up the clock. So it becomes not only a race against uh, you know, the enemies on screen, but against the timer as well. There are other options that make the game you know, more difficult or more easy. So there are options that um, provide you more gold and experience from enemies and treasure chests. There are ones that make it so that um, you know, there's a hedgehog mode basically, where instead of losing life, you lose money as you get hit. And if you run out of coins, then you game over. So there's just a lot of different rules that we put in that you can stack on top of each other so that you can customize the game to play it the way you want to play. Some more features that we have, we're adding in a brand new challenge system. So if you're familiar with some of our previous digital titles, um, this works similar in a similar way. Basically, the game provides you dynamic challenges that you can accomplish throughout the arcade mode. So you can see here on the screenshot, uh, they appear on the left side of the screen, and then basically as you're playing through and completing the channels, they'll pop up. Like if you open a certain number of chests or you defeat a certain number of monsters, you execute a certain number of special moves, uh, the game will keep track of all of this and it'll tell you how you're doing, what kind of progress you're making. And then the cool thing is that by completing these challenges, you're going to be able to level up your characters um, in the, in the metagame, and then also you're going to be able to gain precious vault points. What the vault points allow you to do is unlock all sorts of cool unlockables. Uh, we have character art, concept sketches, other goodies. So basically you're going to be able to enjoy and really understand a lot of how the game was put together in terms of that kind of uh, cool character concept stuff. 
So some more features, we packed in a lot of stuff. Um, you know, owners of the Wii U, Wii U version are going to be able to use the Wii U gamepad. Uh, touch screen, and you're going to be able to use your finger basically to scroll through items, weapons, spells for a much more uh, seamless gameplay experience. As well, we have something called the character visualizer. What this is, is it's a really cool um, basically UI graphic which keeps track of how many hours or how, how often you've been playing a certain character. So, you know, if you are not sure which character you, you want to try out, or if you want to see which character you really haven't spent much time with, the character visualizer is going to be able to show you in visual form which characters you've been playing most and which ones you haven't really touched yet. So what the cool thing is is that this also keeps track of stats for your friends as well. So if you really want to build a balanced multiplayer party, you know, we don't want to have four fighters just running out there. You're going to want to have, you know, different players using different characters. So using this as a way to build that multiplayer party is also going to be one key. Uh, and finally, we also have online leaderboard implementation. So we keep track of a lot of cool stats, like uh, the amount of experience, the amount of gold you accumulate through all your things up. So Dungeons & Dragons Chronicles of Mistara, uh, please download it this June. Uh, it's going to be $14.99 or 1,200 Microsoft points for Xbox Live Arcade, PSN, Wii U eShop, and PC Steam. So that wraps up uh, the Dungeons & Dragons portion, but we do have one more big announcement for you guys. Dan. How about one more world premiere announcement? Hi everybody, I'm Dan. Uh, this is Francis. My name is Ray. I'm a producer at Capcom. Uh, extremely happy, excited, proud to uh, announce this project, uh, Project Team. Um, the team has worked, has a lot of love behind it, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And if you happen to want to sing for whatever reason, just please feel free. Yeah, we want you to participate, okay? So we, we, took the, we took the original NES game, using it as a blueprint, putting it in their engine, and uh, all the character art is hand-drawn, uh, 
in a very typical Disney fashion. Uh, and animated just like they were doing it on a Disney cartoon. Uh, the environments are 3D uh, rendered, as you can see from the trailer. Uh, we're also working very closely with Disney to make sure that uh, everything seems right. It feels like Duck tells the show. Um, we, have, we have authentic character voices, so not just like the actual talent that Disney uses, but we actually have some of the original voices. So, um, Scrooge McDuck, who's the original voice from the cartoon, will be uh, in here. So that's actually a new feature that we'll be talking about uh, in just a second. But also, one of the, uh, the uh, uh, an artist from the original show have laid out all the backgrounds. So we have a lot of um, authentic Disney feel and talent working on this project. And the guys at WayForward and Disney and Capcom, there's so much love for this title, and not just like you know nostalgia, but uh, for Disney and for Capcom and just these type of games that we're like we're literally pouring our heart and soul into this title. So. So, you know, there's going to be a few new things added. Um, uh, about 70% of the game is going to be laid out in the village, you know, about 30% is going to be a little retuned, changed. Uh, we added a whole bunch of cutscenes with a whole bunch of, with a VO from all the characters from DuckTales, or the main characters, uh, as well as like a quick tutorial stage and some endings. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of cool content that will uh, really immerse you into like the Saturday morning feel of the game. Um, we uh, also have the Spiritus Money Bin. Uh, as you can imagine, you're going to be able to do like the, the, uh, the classic jump into the... Uh, I, I, I tell you, we've had some focus tests with that, and people really love that. It. It's, it's literally just jumping into something in Money Bin. But it really <laughs> um, the soundtrack is being done by Jake Kaufman, who works at Wave Forward. Uh, he's done uh, the Dark Tale. He did uh, Darkstalkers music for us. Also, he's done a lot of the stuff with Wave Forward, like the Double Dragon soundtrack. Um, so he, he's taken the, the NES 8-bit music that you guys remember, and he made his own version of the 8-bit music. And then from there, he's also made his, he built upon and created his, uh, like his retro plastic sound that he's known for. So, um, yeah, it's, he's, he's totally doing uh, the soundtrack for this game. Uh, and plastic retro gameplay, I mean, that kind of speaks for itself. It's, it's going to play just like you remember. So, uh, come down to the booth. We had uh, two monitors that were not on at the booth. One is for uh, Dungeons & Dragons, the other one is for DuckTales. So we have a playable. Um, come down, play the game, you get a free poster. Uh, also, we will have a setup where you can take a picture. Um, hashtag DuckTales game, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, search for it, and you'll get a chance to win a free game. So, please come by, uh, check it out. If, uh, if you love DuckTales, you gotta play it. If, you, if you're too young and don't know what DuckTales are, you know, I, I, I feel bad for you, son, but come by and uh, learn what it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it'll be coming out for Xbox Live, PSN, and uh, Wii U. So how'd you guys play? Like? Did, did you guys have fun with that trailer? I heard some singing. You want to try it again? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to ask if we can turn the house lights on, because we're filming this. And we're going to film you guys singing the DuckTales. Let's do it. Stand up. Represent.